Yeah, and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us on a, a little bit of uh, short notice. Just wanted to uh, keep people updated today. And um, oh, we did yeah. send out uh, a press release just a moment ago. So uh, what I am going to, uh, to do is at this point, I'm just gonna mute everybody. Uh, you certainly can unmute yourselves uh, when we get to uh, to the portion, you know, when I finish my statement and you can ask whatever questions uh, you want uh, just for the purpose uh, here of starting, uh, just going to keep it muted at this time. Uh, I also will keep the chat feature open. So if you have something that uh, you want to type a question uh, in the chat, I'll keep an eye uh, on that as we go as well. Okay. I appreciate that. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start with um, uh, just a, an overview of, where, of uh, our actions today. Um, first, the uh, CIC Board of Control was scheduled uh, to meet tomorrow. However, understanding the urgency uh, to communicate to our member schools, to our, uh, to our student athletes, uh, where we are, and uh, the result of last uh, week's meeting with the Department of Health and the Governor's Office, uh, we felt that it was um, important for us to, to move that time frame up uh, if we could to, to meet that need. Um, oh, there's a question here. Could you please give permission to record on our end? Yes, you can record. Okay. Um, so with that, um, we moved our uh, Board of Control meeting from September 17th up to today, September 16th. At its September 16th, 2020 meeting, the CIC Board of Control reaffirmed its September 3rd decision to cancel full contact football for the 2020-2021 school year. This decision was made in alignment with the Connecticut Department of Health's recommendation that football is a high-risk sport and should not be played this fall. The board, however, did agree that it would consider allowing competition at a later time for a sport that cannot hold its regularly scheduled season, such as football, provided it does not negatively impact spring sports. In its response to uh, CIAC, DPH continued to recommend substituting higher risk athletic activities with moderate risk or lower risk options and or postponing those activities to a later time. In alignment with those recommendations, by the end of this week, through our football committee, the CIAC will recommend low and moderate risk football activities in which schools may continue to engage their football athletes if they choose. We do feel that uh, CIAC exhausted every effort we could and did represent the passionate voices of our students, parents, and school personnel in ultimately deciding to align with the recommendation of the governor's office and DPH. One of the key factors for us when talking with other state associations was the understanding that a key factor in playing interscholastic football in other states was alignment with the opinion of the state governor and the health agencies in those states. In DPH's response to us, they did encourage <clears throat> that we consult with the National Federation of State High School Associations, the NFHS, regarding our football plan. Uh, even though our plan is endorsed by the CSMS Medicine Committee, in our consultation with both DPH and the NFHS, we were not able to sufficiently mitigate the risk to a lower categorization for the sport of football. While DPH encouraged CIEC to seek affirmation from the NFHS that our proposed mitigating strategies would meet the standards recognized to recategorize football from its high risk classification, we immediately consulted the NFHS, which responded by stating that as, st as each state association has its own SMAC and State Department of Health Health Agency, the NFHS SMAC will not exercise approval or disapproval of individual state guidelines. As such, there was no further avenue that CIAC felt we can pursue uh, to uh, have our mitigating strategies meet a standard to recategorize football to a moderate risk category. The CIAC is concerned that the recommendations to po postpone higher risk sports to a later time is reserved to CIAC sanctioned interscholastic athletics. 
One of the byproducts of the inconsistency between that is because we are not offering uh, a high school season for sports at this time, uh, that our, our schools, if local DPHs approve football to be played, uh, full contact football to be played in those schools, uh, a, f a school can play uh, football as a club sport, uh, just as um, schools can play ice, uh, girls ice hockey as a club sport, uh, and they can do so without adherence to CIAC's COVID mitigating strategies. Again, I think the key to that is it would have to be approved by the local uh, Department of Health to, uh, to be able to, uh, to engage in that activity. Um, and, and we are concerned as well that, uh, again, at last Friday while we were uh, meeting with DPH, uh, we came to understand that there were multiple um, private groups uh, that were forming for high school football, particularly grades 10 through 12, uh, that would potentially offer a, uh, a season or an experience for kids, that there would be a fee uh, associated with that to, uh, to play. Uh, and, and we do feel that, again, the, the inconsistency in, the, in what is recommended for interscholastic versus non-interscholastic uh, sports uh, does uh, promote an inequity in sport opportunities where kids who can afford to uh, potentially go play uh, and pay for that experience may have an opportunity where others who can't pay for that uh, won't. Uh, so it, that, that is a concern of ours as well. In consideration of playing football at a later time, uh, our board will seek to better understand a number of factors which include, but are not limited to, how many sports are impacted to the extent where it cannot compete during its regularly scheduled season. What other public health strategies have become available and are supported with better research? How will facility scheduling at a later time be impacted when adding at multiple sports? The impact to field maintenance and playability is a concern. The viability of synthetic surface fields passing the GMAX uh, compaction test during winter months is a concern. How has the COVID climate in Connecticut improved to support interscholastic high-risk athletics at a later time? These are some factors that as we uh, would consider any opportunity to play football or any other sport that we cannot play uh, during its regularly scheduled season at a later time uh, would be areas that we are looking to have a better understanding of before making uh, that commitment. Okay. Um, so again, you know, with that, uh, just to again summarize at our meeting today, uh, the board uh, did uh, determine to continue with the cancellation of full contact football uh, as it decided on uh, September 3rd in alignment with the Connecticut Department of Health recommendation that football is a high risk sport and should not be played this fall. And uh, at this time, I will uh, take any uh, questions that you have. Hey, Glenn, Gabby from NBC Connecticut. Um, has DPH been able to give you any sort of answer as to why there is not continuity between youth sports and their recommendations for high school sports? To the best of my understanding, Gabby, the, um, it, it really uh, is, the, the response has been more that um, we asked for a recommendation uh, on football, so they gave us, a, they gave us their, their recommendation on football. So I can only, um, you know, kind of conclude from that, that the, um, maybe the other groups haven't asked for a recommendation. Um, you know, but again, our, our concern in that is if from a public health standpoint, uh, the position is that it, you, we shouldn't play high risk sports right now because our focus is keeping kids in school. Um, you know, the, the, there might need to be some more consistency in it. We don't control that. So uh, again, within our own schools, um, if a local Department of Health allows football, uh, full contact football to be played, I know there's some communities that are playing, uh, you know, Pop Warner and youth football and, and things like that. Um, you know, right now, because we're not sanctioning football now, we couldn't 
prevent a school from playing as a club uh, and, and going out and playing just as a school can have a club in ultimate Frisbee or a school can have a club in rugby or rowing or girls ice hockey. You know, initially, I guess you guys had said that you weren't going to move a season that was canceled to a different season in the school year. What changed for you um, in that process? Again, re really listening to uh, to the voices of our of our parents and kids. Um, our effort was uh, to do as much as we could to be able to play this fall. It was evident that in order for us to play this fall, we were going to have to uh, find a strategy that would recategorize. Uh, the sport out of the higher risk uh, classification. Uh, and, and we just weren't able to do that. And to that end, I would say uh, even, you know, CIAC and our sports medicine committee agree that football is high risk. And in the strategies that, that we put forth, it still doesn't move it out of the, the high risk category after speaking with DPH and the NFHS, you know, we, we understand that. Um, so so we, couldn't, we couldn't move that category. Um, but we understand the, the passion of our kids is that they want to play full contact football. Um, they don't see uh, 7v7, which is, uh, again, a sport we don't sanction um, and we don't have rules for. They don't see that as, uh, you know, as a football experience. They want that full contact experience. So, um, again, we, we don't think right now that there's enough information available uh, to definitively say that there will be another time of year that will be better. But we have laid out some of the criteria that we're looking for to identify a time of the year that may be better, that doesn't impact the sports that were negatively impacted last year to provide them that opportunity uh, to be able to play. And, uh, you know, hopefully things improve and uh, we have an opportunity later in the year to give the kids that experience. Glenn, did you uh, get a chance to talk today about whether you could play volleyball with mask on? Did you get the approval from your sports medicine committee? Yes. Uh, so, you know, our, our sports medicine committee um, had uh, approved that, um, you know, kind of, kind of right along and with the, uh, the, the letter, prior letter from, uh, from DPH. Uh, in this le latest letter uh, from DPH, they did um, – state that with respect to the changes proposed for indoor volleyball, uh, DPH acknowledged that our proposal for the use of a close fitting face covering by all participants may reduce the risk of virus transmission during this activity. And uh, in consultation with our uh, state medical society, um, uh, sports medicine committee, uh, you know, we do feel that it, it mitigates the, the risk for uh, for volleyball in terms of making it a moderate risk versus a lower risk is the aerosolization of COVID in the indoor environment. So that's why without masks, if you play outside, uh, it's considered a lower risk sport because you don't have the factor of the aerosolization of, of COVID. When you go inside, that was our understanding is it's the aerosolization uh, factor that now elevates it to a moderate risk. So wearing the mask indoors um, mitigates the aerosolization factor. Uh, you know, there have been some thoughts, Joe, of, okay, so why can't we just, you know, wear that, that close fitting uh, mask for, uh, for football? Again, they're two different things. The mask wearing in volleyball uh, addresses the, the aerosolization of COVID in the indoor setting. Uh, that is not the concern with, uh, with football. I did think in the letter that they said that originally your board did not think the board of medicine did not recommend playing activities with the mask on and they wanted you to go back and, and get that approval from your board. Is that something you had to do or you did do or did I just misread that? Yeah, no, the, um, um, they did state that, uh, uh, that was in DPH's letter, um, yep. you know, prior to our conversations with DPH, it was, it was pretty clear from, from our sports medicine committee that for volleyball, uh, they were okay with that. Uh, okay. That was that was made, you know, pretty clear at last Friday's um, meeting. So I, I'm not sure what additionally they were uh, they were seeking in terms of that. Okay. And what does um, what exactly does the border control mean by negatively impacting spring sports? And when you're talking about your decision, whether you might visit that uh, possibility. 
Yeah, I think, Sean, there's a lot of sensitivity that our spring sports kids, you know, last year lost everything. And that was a big factor in trying to think about uh, whether or not we move them to the fall, right? So we understood that, um, you know, moving, uh, when we looked at the fall season, that we wanted to be in school for at least two weeks before we go to full team practice. So, you know, even in the sports that we're moving forward with in the fall right now, we're still in our small cohorts until uh, Monday. So we'll evaluate uh, on Friday uh, kind of where we are. We'll keep an eye on that. And if things look good, we'll give the green light for our schools on September 21st to go to those full team uh, practices and, and go to that next phase of uh, of our plans. But when you think about September 21st being the date where, you know, we're going to get in those full team practices. Well, if we were playing baseball or softball right now, uh, that would still be the date, right? So you would take a sport that traditionally would play, you know, about 20 games and you would be reducing that to, you know, maybe 10 or 10 or 12 games. Uh, and that, that's a significant impact. Uh, and you wouldn't be playing uh, you would have, you know, we really don't have a potential to play for a state championship in the fall as well. If possible, we'll give some sort of tournament experience to kids uh, at the end of the season. Uh, but again, we, we're not sure exactly what that would look like. So, uh, you know, we don't want to take kids that lost their entire season, their entire championship experience. And similar to that, the winter sports that, you know, lost some championship experiences to, we, we do want to provide them uh, you know, that those spring kids as much of a full experience and opportunity uh, as COVID would allow for, for them to uh, experience this year. Uh, and again, with that, you know, we, uh, we will look to see, is there a way that, that things can be shifted based on uh, kind of where we are uh, a little bit later in the year and the understandings of what we have? Um, you know, there's conversations, you know, all the time about when a vaccine will come out, the effectiveness of that, you know, so I think there's a lot to be learned in the coming months. Uh, once we know that, uh, we can have a better understanding of where we might be able to, uh, to, to shift things in play. Clint, do you have a, a timeline for when you would like to have a decision on whether you're moving football to a later season or is that still up in the air? Uh, we don't have a specific timeline right now, Sean. I think the, um, you know, the, the recommendation from, uh, from DPH and from the governor's office was really, uh, you know, to, to move it to a later time uh, when more information was available. So, um, you know, even in their recommendations there, uh, it, it's kind of get, getting more information so we can understand what the best time frame of that is. Uh, I know there's a lot of comparisons to, you know, what some neighboring states have done in, you know, kind of that late February to early, uh, early April type of uh, scheduling and scenario. And, and listen, you know, that, that might work out to be a good time frame. It might not. Um, so I think right now you, you can't with any confidence say, uh, yes, it's, you know, if late February is going to be significantly better than now and, and you can go. So, um, you know, again, we, we want to be as, as uh, open and as upfront with, uh, with, the, with our membership as we can. Uh, so, you know, scheduling that season at this point without more information just uh, we don't think is responsible. And did the insurance companies weigh in in all this at the CIAC level or the school level? Football is a liability heavy sport anyway, and I'm guessing that some of the insurance companies might have been wary of a potential super spreader volume. We did not hear any insurance concerns throughout uh, throughout our conversation. Obviously, this has been a very passionate issue from both football parents as well as players. You know, what do you say to those kids, I guess, who uh, aren't able to play football this fall in 11 and 11? Right. So, uh, and again, you know, we, we certainly have listened to uh, to, to their – their concerns. We've listened to their statements, and um, you know, again, I think um, uh, listen to uh, to, to uh, the very well done interview with a representative from uh, from Utah, uh, who talked about how things were running there, and and that is one of the uh, again consistencies we've we've seen in states that have moving forward, and one of the consistencies in states that aren't moving forward uh, with football was uh, where the alignment was, um, you know, with with their a state health agency. So, um, you know, the, the alignment, uh, again, we've exhausted all the, uh, all of the, um, 
uh, potential strategies that, that we think we could uh, use to potentially mitigate that risk down to a uh, moderate level. Um, the CIAC and our sports med committee, the DPH and the NFHS um, all agree that the, uh, that it, it really football stays at a, uh, at a high risk. So, uh, you know, with that and the recommendation we have in our state, uh, it gives us now the, um, you know, the direction that uh, we can't play now, but if things um, are available later uh, to play, that, that we'll consider it at that time. Glenn, uh, Game Times report that there could have been a COVID positive uh, student at the rally last week at the Capitol. Does that give you any kind of pause as you head towards a, a fall season here and other sports? Do you worry that, that kids could get sick now that we're, we're still uh, considering playing other fall sports here? Yeah, Frankie. So I think um, as we head into to playing sports, um, you know, nobody is heading into this with the perception that uh, we're not still playing in a COVID environment. So, um, you know, th there is potential that uh, that kids are going to get COVID. There's potential that, you know, other people uh, are still going to get COVID. Um, you know, we see that. Uh, we in Connecticut, we're doing exceptionally well uh, in terms of the, the COVID mitigation. So, you know, again, I think we're in a better place in, in Connecticut than we are in a lot of other places. Uh, but it still doesn't mean that there's no risk um, to, to getting COVID. So I think we've done a pretty good job of educating people. Um, and I think we've also done a pretty good job of, of putting a fairly robust plan in place that has COVID mitigating strategies to reduce that risk as much as possible. And one of the key elements to that is, is the screening uh, of kids and that, you know, that, again, that, that close connection with the, uh, with the coaches where if we recognize, um, you know, somebody with symptoms or, or it becomes aware and through the screening process, somebody has symptoms, uh, addressing that before they, they enter into that cohort or, or enter into those um, um, experiences where they're with other kids. So, uh, you know, we do have a lot in place that, uh, that accounts for, uh, for that, but fully understand that we are playing sports. We're going back to school, you know, at a time where, uh, where COVID is, uh, is still with us. Hi, Glenn, Jeff Jacobs. Uh, I just wanted to ask you two questions, kind of logistical one. Uh, if, the uh, kids compete in the club uh, aspect of football and you have spring football, uh, will they still be eligible to play for spring football? Yes. Okay. And the other one was, have, are you going to form or is there an existing committee to kind of go through all the various uh, parameters uh, possibilities of spring sports uh you know if it to fit in football or is there already the football committee in front of that or a spring committee or what's the kind of uh logistical thing there so the the decision jeff of of where the um if an opportunity would exist to uh to move football with that would uh, would really come from the board of control in consultation uh, with the SMAC committee and the, um, uh, the subcommittees of the affected sports. So, you know, right, uh, right now, the only sport that is affected in not playing a, you know, a, a season at this point is football. Um, but again, we, we don't know as we head through the fall, as we head into the winter, if other sports will be impacted. So uh, if there are, then uh, having conversations with those groups is important again because it is a scenario uh, that may impact multiple sports. Um, it it wouldn't be uh, a decision that an individual sport committee would handle. It would be more of a decision that the board of uh, control would handle. That would be looking at the big picture of all sports. Thanks, Glenn. This is Kai from Fox sixty one. I know you touched on it a little bit, but. The DPH has said they're not going to support anything that's high risk right now, probably not anytime soon. How much of a focus now turns to trying to figure out winter sports, which the majority of which are high risk to try to, you know, avoid some last minute kind of issues we've been dealing with now. Uh, yeah, thanks, Kai. I think that's, um, you know, some important aspects of, again, our conversations with, uh, with DPH, as you said, right now, they're not, 
so they're suggesting and recommending that um, moderate and lower risk uh, activities be substituted in place of higher risk activities uh, until a time uh, when um, other public health strategies may be more available and better studied. So, you know, that, that may happen between now uh, and the winter, but they, uh, they also recommend uh, in their letter that uh, having more complete information as well as affirmation from the uh, CIAC Sports Medicine Committee and NFHS of their confidence of our proposed strategies could be a great assistance to not only our board, but individual school districts, families, uh, and decision makers of whether they feel they can safely and responsibly engage uh, in higher risk or indoor moderate risk uh, sports going forward. So, you know, we we are reading from uh, from the last uh, guidance from uh, DPH that you know we should look to see what other public health strategies become available and when information is better studied. Uh, as we move forward, but that uh, as we move forward, it really should be CIAC and our sports uh, med committee uh, in terms of the, the conversations uh, here and providing uh, that direction to our schools. Uh, this is Greg Letter again. Question, um, have you uh, talked about any, any of the different uh, plans or activities you might do for football um, as substitutes this fall? Yeah, I got to give a lot of credit to uh, some of the folks up in the ECC that I think did a tremendous job and will be uh, bringing uh, some of their work to the uh, to the committee tomorrow is something that we previously reviewed and shared uh, with DPH that uh, again, our, we, we've had a chance to uh, to look at. So um, there are some activities that are, uh, you know, like a 7v7 format that are in there. There's um, uh, combines, linemen challenges, weightlifting uh, competitions, uh, you know, different combine type activities. So uh, we're appreciative of the of the uh, excellent work of our athletic directors and our coaches uh, in really getting ahead of this. And again, from from our standpoint now, we'll make recommendations of what those lower and moderate risk activities are. But um, you know, we and, and we'll continue to provide our suggested. Um, mitigating strategies uh, for uh, people that engage in those, uh, but really at the you know at this point because we're not sanctioning the season um, right now, it, there there would be no requirement to, um, to to adhere to that. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, again, I thank you all for, uh, for your time. And, um, you know, we will, uh, of course, you know, as we go, uh, go along, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, John, Joel, myself, uh, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, thank you.